go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Release the World for Christ presents the Chris Panos Show. God has burdened Chris Panos to reach one billion souls enslaved behind the iron and bamboo curtain. Fresh from recent journeys to these countries where he has distributed Bibles and preached the living word, here is Chris Panos. Welcome to the Chris Panos Show, Mrs. Gandhi. It's a wonderful pleasure to be here and to be able to interview such a wonderful person as yourself. Today and yesterday, literally hundreds and thousands of people are, are just coming into your walkway and pleading that Mrs. Gandhi returned to power. And I want to ask you a question. I don't think that the United States has seen you as a mother of love, one who cares for her country, one who's had pain and bitterness. And, and I just want to ask you to share what you feel about India and what you really want to do for India. Well, you know, I was <clears throat> brought up in an atmosphere when we, our country was not free. And the whole house was a center of the freedom movement. And freedom to us meant not just freedom from foreign rule, but freedom from everything that had made the country weak and which caused hardship to the people. That is poverty, economic backwardness, and all that that implies. So I was, uh, had this, always had this very deep commitment to the Indian people. And um, because I've always lived amongst, well, literally masses of people coming to whichever house I've been in, before and after freedom, um, and they come to tell their stories of, they share their joys and their sorrows. So I've been very much involved with it. And I do, I feel it's happening to me. Uh, and I think that I'm able to convey this to them, and that is why they, they've come to me, whether I'm in power or not. But most people abroad do not see politicians in that light. For them, politics is a career. Now, to me, it's not a career. It is uh, it's something that is uh, it's essential to do. And until we can remove uh, poverty, I mean, we can't remove it absolutely, of course, but until we can lessen it and raise the standards of living with the people so that they can have some human dignity, live a life of decency, and um, begin to stand on their own feet, I feel the task is not over. Well, you have a tremendous job. My wife, Ernestine, commented to me over the last 11 years we've been coming in and out of India, the great change. Uh, in, in the country itself, and she commented many times, oh, Mrs. Gandhi has done such a wonderful work here in India, and uh, we want to certainly uh, tell you what the people of America mm -hmm. think about you too. I wanted the people of America to really feel your heartbeat, <laughs> and I, I don't think that, uh, that you've gi been given a fair chance in America for people to know the real Mrs. Gandhi. And I hopefully, I am hoping that you will share a little bit about some of the things you'd like to do for India when you come back into power. Well, the basic thing is to, to let the fruits of independence reach to the people. Now that means it's a long and very hard journey and nothing worthwhile in life is easy ever. Now what we have to do is to, my father built the very, the foundations of the nation and we have been trying to build over it, to try and um, increase our production of uh, agriculture and industry because it's only when you have the goods that you can give it to the people. Then we have to ensure proper distribution so that what we have is not confined to a few rich people or a few cities, but goes to the furthest points and perhaps uh, those who need it most. Along with it, we have to see that the people get social justice because we've had, such, we've had many social evils and there are people who've been denied um, 
even though I mean, they may not be poor necessarily, but they haven't had the same opportunities as others. Or there's been discrimination. Now we have to fight against that, things like casteism or what we call communalism, that is, you know, any one religion being considered less than the other. Yes. You know, in our country we have all the religions of the world and very large minorities. I wish you would uh, comment about the minorities a little too. Well, you know, we have, the last census showed about uh, over 60 million Muslims, but I think they've gone up considerably since then, and about 15 million Christians. Now. They're citizens of India, and we believe they should get um, equal opportunity. And I think that I was able to do a great deal in this direction, because um, in the early years when I was Congress president, or even before, I discovered that a lot of people felt that how can a minority person become, sta uh, say, chief minister of a state, because the majority is another religion and they just won't uh, stand for it. So I worked for it without any fanfare or slogan mongering and I was able to change the atmosphere so that we've had now Muslims in the highest possible places like President of India. This one. What do you think about the President's speech last night? Well, I haven't read the speech, uh, but um, I'm glad he's assured us that elections will take place in time. If there were doubts, it's not we who are creating them. It's uh, important members of the ruling party who have been talking rather loosely and say, well, maybe they won't be held, maybe there will be a border incident, maybe there will be something else. Let me ask you this. How is the money coming in uh, for the campaign? Well, I'm sorry to say there's precious little money. <laughs> we print coupons, you know, and then we, uh, uh, so that however small an amount it is, uh, the person gets a receipt for it. And most of the money is by very ordinary people. There are some people who give an amount every month, quite small amounts, and others give uh, specifically. Sometimes the, the, uh, the candidate himself will collect. Then the individual people, piece. in other words, the, the, the little people out there that yes. have very little money. Yes. They're the ones that are giving to Mrs. Gandhi yes. because they believe and, in her. Yeah, and I'll tell you this now. For instance, when I go by train, uh, the porter doesn't charge. Now, when we say, no, you must take the money, he says, well, all right, I'll take it, but you put it in your fund, and, you know, he'll hand it back, that sort of thing. And so, so and, uh, you get many gifts that people will just walk from right off the street and yeah. say, Mrs. Gandhi, please let me contribute well, to Well, uh, we don't get enough such gifts, but we don't get them. <laughs> yes. Well, I and think then, that's of course, we get money from our membership. You know, when a person becomes a member, he pays so much. Then existing MPs or members of the Legislative Assembly of our party, they have to give so much of what they get. How could the people of the United States help Mrs. Gandhi? Well, the main problem is there's been such hostility in the press and the media that there is a need to create greater understanding. Now, part of this is because they have never considered India as, uh, as part of their global strategy. I and mean, it's always, you know, they're worried about Pakistan and they're worried about China. And India just happens to be there. And uh, the other thing is that because of the power of the United States, many countries have done exactly what they were told to do. Now, we have a very clear idea of our national objectives and goals and, and the road by which we want to reach them. Uh, and we find it's not always appreciated, especially by the administration there. So they think we are just being difficult. Although, I mean, it's not nice to say I told you so, but in many things, Vietnam and so on, what we had said, uh, well, if you go along this way, this is what is going to happen, and that is what did happen. So we have to look, each country, but I mean, I can only speak for myself, each country has to look for uh, its own interests and its own future. We certainly want f uh, friendship with all countries and we place very great value on friendship with the uh, U.S. I'm happy to say that although the administration and the press have not always been with us, the people have been very friendly. Yes. And they, I mean, the people they have been of the United friendly. States have always said good things yes. about Mrs. Gandhi. And my real thought is, is how can the people of the United States help Mrs. Gandhi now? 
Well, this in is this a, to campaign try to raise <laughs> money to help you. Well, I don't know if it's proper to raise money abroad, and there are many rules here. It's not easy to get I money see. from abroad. But um, it's, uh, we do need financial help, and we do need uh, sympathy and understanding. So do you feel that, uh, that actually that when, should you return as prime minister, that actually that you will seek better and stronger ties with the United States? Well, I have always done so, but somehow from that side, uh, there hasn't been the response there should be. Sometimes there's been a response personally. For instance, when I went to the first time in 1966, uh, perhaps you saw the papers that President Johnson went out of his way to be nice to me, and yes. this was commented upon by That's because everybody. he was from Texas. I see. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, still, his opinion of India was uh, quite different. I mean, he delayed signing the, uh, you know, the paper giving us wheat, and that was a time of famine and great difficulty yes. here. So sometimes this kind of... I don't know whether it was advisors who came in the way or what. Do you feel that, uh, that everything in India now that is coming right on time, do you feel that the country now is, is uh, peaking itself out to where the poverty is going no, to no, be no, definitely on the, uh, Absolutely the contrary, because we have in the two and a half years of rule by the Janata Party, uh, we have uh, gone backwards in every possible way. Where we had left so much, we, we had left a very good you know, bank account in the country, uh, almost embarrassingly large foreign exchange balance of payment situation, and exports, production, industrial as well as agricultural at its peak. Nothing could, I mean, it was absolutely at its, uh, the best it had ever been. And this was commented upon by the World Bank as well as International Monetary Fund and many universities and other experts. And teams came here to see how we had managed to do it. Now, in these two and a half years, this is just completely finished. Hmm. Yeah, and now they, they, practically they have no money. They're saying they have no money to help the drought-affected people. And the law and order situation, of course, is absolutely disastrous. There are so many murders and thefts and dacoities taking place. Nobody's safe anywhere. In other words, this party yeah. is more or less for the rich instead of the poor. Well, I would say it, it has helped the rich, but I would say it just hasn't governed. It's just, the country has just drifted. They just and, don't have the authoritarian it's just been rule. A very, no, it's not authoritarian rule. It's just been weak. If you don't know your yes. mind, you don't know where to go, you can't take the first step. I mean, you can go slowly or fast, but... They're not well organized then. They're not interested. They don't have the, comp the, the competence and they don't have the will because they're too busy trying to hold on to the chair and decide who will sit in which chair. In other words, they're seeking power Well, that's glory. how they came because otherwise such very disparate parties with different, completely different ideologies could never have got together unless they said, well, we are throwing a bomb aboard uh, anything that we believed in before and now we just, our one aim is to be in government. So now we, you feel that... Uh, and that is why the people are fed up. I see. Well, that's, that's the real truth too, and because this is what we've been hearing. And atrocity, especially in the rural areas against the, you know, the weak, what we call the weakest section, the most oppressed socially and economically. Mrs. Gandhi, one of the questions that uh, that I have been thinking about recently very much is that is how that that so many people make such a big fuss about the authoritarian movement that you that you were such a person of authority that they don't really understand organized authority. I wish you would express yourself along these lines. Well, frankly, they just invented this word. As one of our newspapers said, that the word authoritarian just means Mrs. Indira Gandhi. Yes. It has no other meaning. <laughs> um, uh, the only, um, because on the, I think I'm the very contrary of that. 